Hi, and welcome to Anatomy and Physiology at Glen Oaks Community College. I'm Dr. Ren Hartung. For this video, I'd like to start looking at electrical physiology of the heart. In other words, what's happening with the cardiac myocytes with the heart cells when the heart contracts? How is the electrical charge changing across that membrane? Um, for that, I'd like to review first resting potential. If you recall, resting potential is a charge difference across a cell membrane. So if this is a cell, and this obviously is the membrane, um, there is a charge that's across at least most of the membranes of the cells in your body. That charge is represented like this. It's a bit negative on the inside compared to the outside. For skeletal muscle, and for neurons, at least, that membrane potential is around minus 70 millivolts. Somewhere in the neighborhood of minus 70 millivolts. Notice that I'm reporting that as a negative number. The reason for that is whenever we measure membrane charge, we're always measuring the inside compared to the outside. For cardiac myocytes, by the way, I don't really have room to write that. For cardiac myocytes, that charge is around minus 90 millivolts. So a bit more negative when we're talking about heart cells. That's one difference between them. The other major difference comes when we talk about action potential. Speaking of action potential, let's talk about that a little bit. With action potential, an action potential is a change in this membrane voltage. A stimulus happens and it causes this piece of the membrane, for instance, to change its charge to go from minus 70 on the inside or minus 90 in the case of the cardiac myocytes, to being positive on the inside. Um, I know with skeletal muscles and neurons, we're talking about around plus 30 inside instead of minus 70. That stimulates the next area of membrane to undergo the same change, and that stimulates the next area of membrane to undergo the same change. And then behind it, the charge returns to resting potential. So an action potential is basically the membrane is stimulated to change its charge, so it changes its charge and then it immediately goes back to resting potential. That's an action potential, a wave of depolarization moving over the cell. For skeletal muscle cells, this is the stimulus for contraction. For neurons, this is the way the neurons send signals. For cardiac myocytes, just like with skeletal muscle, this is the stimulus for contraction. Okay, let's look at action potential a little bit different. Um, we're going to look at one little area of the membrane and look at the charge changes that the membrane undergoes as the action potential screams by. To do that, we use a graph. The y-axis of the graph is voltage, it's millivolts, and the x-axis of the graph is time. And it's a very short period of time, we're talking milliseconds here. I'm going to write a dotted line on here, and that dotted line when we talked about neurons and when we talked about skeletal muscle cells, that was called threshold. And for those cells, it's around minus 55. I'm not sure what it is for cardiac myocytes, but it's probably similar. This represents resting potential. That minus 70 millivolts, or in the case of cardiac myocytes, minus 90 millivolts of resting potential. We reach threshold. When we reach threshold, this is when that charge change happens. We go way up to around plus 30. And then if this is skeletal muscle or neurons, the charge comes immediately back down again, goes a bit more negative than resting, and then comes back to resting. 
the depolarization was stimulated by voltage gated sodium channels. That's what causes this depolarization. The repolarization, the return back down towards resting potential, is caused by voltage gated potassium channels. And again, this is the action potential in skeletal muscle cells and in neurons. For cardiac myocytes, things are a little bit different, but these two parts are similar in that cardiac myocytes also have voltage-gated sodium channels. They cause the depolarization. Cardiac myocytes also have voltage-gated potassium channels, and they cause the repolarization. Let's look at how cardiac myocytes are different, though. To do that, I have to get rid of the right-hand side of my action potential here and redraw it. For cardiac myocytes, there's a plateau phase, and then we return towards resting potential. This plateau phase is caused by another voltage-gated ion channel. This one is called, in most textbooks that I've looked at anyway, it's called the slow voltage-gated calcium channel. And this is the major way that cardiac myocytes differ in terms of action potential from skeletal muscle cells and neurons. The calcium, the calcium entering the cell at this point causes the cell to be positive for an extended period of time. If you recall the sliding filament theory, the increase in concentration of calcium inside of the skeletal muscle cells caused the filaments to slide, to slide over each other for the cell to contract. So we have another um, area for calcium to come into the cell here. In skeletal muscle cells it was coming from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. In heart muscle cells it's also coming from sarcoplasmic reticulum, but it's coming from the outside of the cell as well. Okay, let's think about why this would be this way. Why would you want there to be a plateau phase in cardiac myocytes? If you think of skeletal muscle cells and the skeletal muscle cell twitch, when a stimulus comes down, if my biceps is just a single cell, a twitch comes down and we get twitch relax, twitch relax. So it's a very brief contraction, twitch relax, twitch relax. That works for skeletal muscle cells because we have neuronal control and if we want an extended contraction we can simply send more action potentials. The heart doesn't work that way though. There's a single action potential that comes through the entire myocardium and the myocardium has to contract and stay contracted long enough for the blood to leave the heart. So part of the way, at least part of the way, that the heart muscle makes sure we push out all of the blood before it starts to relax again is this plateau phase of the action potential that's caused by these slow voltage gated calcium channels. Another th thing that might help you remember these slow voltage gated calcium channels, you may have heard of drugs called calcium channel blockers and you'll probably hear about them down the road in your education. Calcium channel blockers block these sorts of channels. They block the slow voltage gated calcium channels. They're antagonistic to these channels. So less calcium comes into the cell, this plateau is shortened, and what we end up with is with each heartbeat, it's a more of a brief contraction of the myocardium. That is going to have the effect of decreasing the output of the heart, the pumping effect of the heart, and that can decrease cardiac output, which can then decrease blood pressure. These calcium channels also exist in smooth muscle cells. Smooth muscle cells wrap around blood vessels, if they contract harder, the blood pressure goes up. If they, can, if they relax a little bit, then the blood pressure goes down. So by giving a patient calcium channel blockers, we can help the smooth muscle to relax and decrease blood pressure in another way. So that is the action potential in cardiac myocytes, and I think that's enough for this video.
As always, if there's any questions or comments, please let me know. And thank you once again for watching.